Well, welcome back to Channel Ron. Today I'm going to show you how to replace the oil filter on your oil barrel. I have three of these I have to do today. This is a preventive maintenance type of thing to do, uh, just to uh, make sure that the fuel going into your burner uh, is clean. So you're going to need a few things. You're going to need a filter, first of all, and on the side of the canister, and I'll show that to you, it'll tell you what type of filter that you need. This one here uh, is an F25 filter. You're going to need that, some paper towels, if you have some, some speedy dry, just in case, I'm in the Mrs. Garage here and I want to make sure that I don't make a mess. Uh, you're going to need a regular screwdriver, a 5 8 wrench, some gloves if you'd prefer. Uh, as I get older, I find myself using gloves a lot more than, than I used to. Uh, some newspaper and some sort of a container uh, to put the uh, excess oil in when you open up the filter. So that's what we're going to do right now. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, I also failed to mention you're going to want yourself a waste basket as well, not just a trash bag. You're going to find if you put the trash bag in the waste basket, it's going to be a lot easier for you to manage. Uh, so, first thing you need to do is you need to expose the filter itself. Now, I have a little box that goes over mine here and it protects it from uh, the, uh, the kids and the grandchildren from knocking into it. Uh, wear the bicycles and stuff like that. I don't want to take any chances. And some insurance companies actually require you to have this. And all it is is just a box I cut out uh, so it fits down over. So what you want to do is take any kind of container that you have. The little pie plates that you can get at the dollar store work pretty good too. And you want to place that underneath the uh, filter. Now, it's not a bad idea to turn the emergency switch off. I have because if someone is calling for heat or for hot water, if you have a boiler, it's going to try to pull the fuel in, and it's not going to be able to while you're doing this. So, um, turn the emergency switch off, and then on the top here, you're going to have a little valve, and you want to turn that until that bolt goes all the way down or the nut comes completely off. And what that's for is if there's a fire, this here will separate from the nut itself, and it will close that valve. All right. So once you've done that, I usually what I'll do is I just kind of turn it upside down, just so I know, and keep it right there. And then you take your five inch wrench and you go ahead and you loosen that up. And you know I'm gonna put, I've got to put my newspaper on there just in case anything splatters or anything like that. All right. So let's go ahead. I don't know if you can see all the dirt and everything coming out of that, but pull that bolt right out of there. Set that on the newspaper. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just kind of empty that out, just like that. Go ahead and get some of your paper towel. Just plan on using a lot of paper towel for this job. Gonna wipe that bolt down just so it doesn't soak through the newspaper and inside here you're going to usually have quite a bit of crud so all you want to do is you should want to try to get down in there as best you can with the paper towel and then sometimes what I'll do is I'll take my wrench and I'll kind of push it around there like that and kind of pull that out and there you go you want to try to get all that stuff right out of there just throw it away and then just repeat the process a couple of times. Again, don't be ashamed to, uh, don't be bashful on the, on the paper towel. Clean that right up best you can. Now this isn't too, too bad. I change this every year. There we go. Clean where the gasket's gonna go. Yeah. Go. That's all set. Throw that away. And then on the filter, to transfer that from your little bucket here to the trash, usually all I'll do. Now, if I'm in my garage, I'll just kind of quickly push it over in there. But where I'm in the Mrs. Garage, I want to make sure I don't make a mess. So, just going to take that like that and dispose of that. All right. So now all we need to do is take our new filter. We have a gasket that goes here. We have the new filter like that. 
And then we have two small washers. We have one for the bolt right here that it comes with. We're going to go ahead and replace that. Put the new one on just like that. And then you have a really itty bitty one. And what that one is for is for the bleeder screw. So we're going to go ahead and remove that. And I'll show you what this does here in a second. Take that one out, discard that one, put the new one in, and we can put that back in. Okay. Now all we have to do is we need to put the new filter on. Now there's nothing else dripping down, so I can safely move that pan away. But I'm going to put some paper towel down here just in case I have an issue. Now we should be able to just slide that underneath. This one's a little close to the concrete. Set that up in there like that. Nice snug fit. Go ahead and put your bolt back in. Snug it up. Just gonna wipe everything down one more time. Throw that away. Don't need that anymore. All right. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take and turn your fuel back on. Let's get that started. Turn it, off, turn it until that bolt comes all the way to the top, and it'll stop. Usually what I like to do is crank it all the way open like that, and then just back off maybe a quarter just so it doesn't get stuck. Now, the fuel is going into the filter, but it's going to be airlocked. So what we'll do is we're going to have to crack this bleeder screw. Again, I'm going to put some more paper towel here. I'm going to crack that until the air comes out. And I can kind of see it bubbling a little bit there. And just wait a little bit. And that should push the uh, fuel in and force the air out. Once it does, it'll start to overflow. That should do it. Okay, go ahead and tighten that down. All right, wipe off any excess fuel. And I'll keep the newspaper on here just for a little while, for maybe a day or so, just to make sure that, you know, I didn't miss, uh, that I may have missed something, so. All right, so now, question is, what do you do with this fuel? Now, you can do one of two things. I'm not that concerned about putting this back in the tank. I mean, it's dirty, but I can filter it and put it back in the tank. Or you can just take all your paper towel and newspaper, soak it all up, and throw it in the trash. It's totally up to you. I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just kind of uh, filter this and put this in my garage because my garage furnace is um, a little bit different than this one here. So I'll run this in the garage. And that's basically all you have to do. Uh, just clean up your mess and then uh, you should be good to go. Not a whole lot to it, like I said before. Uh, I do not need my speedy dry, uh, which is a good thing. But you, if you can have this on hand, it's not a bad idea because uh, things do go wrong sometimes. So just make sure you have some of that just in case. Um, just remember this is something I built. I'm not sure if you could buy something like that, but it's a good idea to protect that filter just in case uh, something were to fall on. So I hope this helps and stay tuned for the next one.